you've been paying attention to the Ruger catalogs, for a couple of years the red label dropped out, and that's because they were redesigning it. Dwight Potter, one of Ruger's engineers, took a whole new look at how to actually make the red label receiver. It's an investment casting, but now it's made from only one piece. The Ruger Red Label has an investment cast stainless steel receiver, and the barrels are cold hammer forged at the Ruger plant. Now there's some changes to the barrels. There's no rib between them, and you have your options on which kind of top rib you'd like. But if you look very carefully at the Red Label's barrels, they'll appear to be wider apart in the center than they are at the end. And that's because the barrels themselves are thinned in the middle. They're nice and thick and heavy up here by the monoblock, they're also thick and heavy up here at the front, and the reason for that is that this gun comes with interchangeable choke tubes. To open the gun up, simply press on the top lever, draw the barrels down. Now this gun has selective automatic ejection, meaning if you pull the trigger on a barrel, it will not only extract the cartridge, but it will eject it too. If you don't fire that barrel, the cartridge will stay on the extractor. Now this gun has mechanical triggers, no inertial triggers here, all mechanical, but it is a single selective trigger. When you go to the rear tang, you'll see that of course this is an automatic safety because it's primarily a hunting gun. But whenever you open and close the barrels, it moves to the safe position, push the safety forward. That allows the gun to fire. And depending on which way you rotate the safety lever, you'll either get a T for top, or you push it over, push it forward, there'll be B for bottom. Now the stock on this gun is actually fairly nicely figured walnut, something you don't see a lot these days coming from the United States. And the butt pad is very useful. If you look very carefully at it, it's nice and spongy in the middle, but up here there's a harder insert. And what this does is allows the gun to come up and not catch on your clothing. You still get the recoil dissipating benefit of the pad, but also it's easy to get this gun up onto your shoulder without snagging. One of the things that Ruger did with the redesign was to change the stocking. Ruger had, I think, a little bit too much drop on the 12 gauge guns. The 20 gauge guns I always thought point, pointed fairly well. They shot where you looked, but I had some trouble with the 12s. And they've taken a look at all of their stock dimensions. You have an inch and a quarter to two and a half inches of drop at the most. And on this gun, you have a 14 and a half inch length of pull. Your wrist, of course, is checkered. And it's a nice thin wrist. It really allows you to have good control of the gun. On the fore end, you've got a Delian edge latch and simply Pulling the latch allows the forend to come off. Pull the barrels off and you can see very clearly the locking surfaces. The thing about the Ruger Red Label receiver that a lot of people don't know is it doesn't have traditional trunnions. There's no pins that come in. The trunnions are actually uh, cast and then machined in the manufacture of the receiver. It's a very difficult thing to hold that, that kind of tolerance, but the Ruger guys have done an excellent job with it. This remains, as far as I know, the only affordable American-made over-under.